Hello, my name is Jim Moyle and welcome to episode 6 of my PESTA and PowerShell series. Today we're going to look at putting what we've learnt so far together in a real world example. And uh, that real world example is a uh, project that I have up on uh, GitHub called Yet Another Right Log. And the reason why we're going to look at this is because I've developed this and the, the associated PESTA tests over a, a, a number of years actually um, and honed them down so it's a good example to give. So I needed a, a write log function because I, I write a lot of scripts or, or bits of software for enterprise customers and any time you write them a script they say ah, can you can you make sure there's a log file along with that Jim and so I wanted to make a, a function that was light simple easy to use and I could reuse all the time so given that this is a function that I use a massive amount I decided to put a bit of time into thinking about what I wanted it to do so as I said simple as possible it should have the usual log stuff right it should have a timestamp it should have error warning information debug and you should have put be able to put a simple message in the log file single line in a text file you could restart it append a line take pipeline input very important and even more important than that take an exception as pipeline input so I can I can pipe an error directly to write log and it will take care of everything it will take the message out of the exception it will write within the error level and put the timestamp on and um, both human and machine readable so I get asked for log files that um, you know it's easy for a human to troubleshoot and I get asked for log files that you can pipe straight into uh, something like Splunk without any conversion only one verbose line I, I have a bad habit of uh, using verbose for debugging purposes sometimes but functions should do one thing and it should have one verbose line telling you that that thing has been achieved um, <clears throat> human readable logs should look good in notepad and uh, CM trace should have good comment based help because I want this to be reusable as uh, possible so when somebody comes along reads my script they can tell how to use the right log function alright so that's the, the design goals and <clears throat> that's the um, repo on github great so let's have a look at the function in VS Code so a lot of the hard lifting for the function is done in the parameters so we're going to be able to do write log space message so it needs to take positional input it needs to uh, take pipeline input both by um, uh, type and by property name and we'll have a look at why there's a parameter to parameter set there as well um, we need to be able to set the the, uh, the log level and will default to information so you can just go write log message and it will default to information um, it needs to have default for everything that's not a mandatory parameter so the path is into the temp file with a generic um, generic name the machine readable I decided to make JSON so a little switch to uh, go for JSON format and I wanted to switch to say right just just start a new log at this point and then for the last bit we're looking at this is the pipeline um, for the exception so it does the correct thing for uh, for the exception great Let's have a quick look at what's actually happening in the code so we've got a switch on the uh, parameter set for the normal log yeah we'll get a human readable date we'll pick the um, error level we'll see if it's JSON format and then we'll either write the log using add content if it's JSON format or we'll export the CSV uh, as tab separated so that um, it looks good for human readable but also at a pinch you could use um, import CSV for that and then we've got the verbose log message for the exception we're going to essentially grab out of um, the inputs yeah 
the message, we're going to set the level to error, we're going to keep the path as it was and keep the JSON format as it was and then recursively go to write log so that we keep the, uh, the code clean and the same for start new. Yeah. We're going to um, set the parameters, we're going to clear the log and then again recursively look at write log to keep the code clean. All right, so what does that look like? Well, the human readable log, here we go, timestamp level message, timestamp, very clear for people to read. The error should stand up out in CM trace, and um, we can see that I've actually managed to pipe an exception into the log correctly. And JSON, I've only put a JSON uh, file name extension on here, so VS Code picks it up. Oh, look, that, that's valid JSON. Excellent. So, how do I make sure that all of these design considerations um, are correct? Well, obviously, we're going to use Pesta to do that. So, traditional setup to go and find the uh, to go and find the um, function and um, dot source it. Now, I've mentioned before, a good way to split up your PESTA test is by input, execution, and output. So let's have a look at input. It takes an object as pipeline input. Now through here, you'll see a range, act, and assert, called the three A's. In testing, a range means you're setting something up, act means you're doing the thing, assert means you're testing the thing. Um, if you end up with too much here, you, you, you should be splitting that up into separate tests, but that's uh, a common format. I wouldn't usually put these comments in, but it's just for the for the video and for uh, so you can see what's going on. So a range, we're gonna set up a custom object, yeah, message level, JSON format, and path. And oh look, we're gonna use the test drive for the path so we don't have to clean up our logs afterwards. We're going to pipe that object straight into write log. So now we're testing that write log will take pipeline input by value. We're going to get the content. We're going to convert from JSON. We're going to take the message out and then we'll say should be exactly that which is the message we've uh, arranged at the top. So let's put a breakpoint in and run the code. Excellent. It takes that value as pipeline input. It takes a single string as pipeline input. Again, now we're chucking a single string at it. And we're going to test in exactly the same way that we're going to be able to read from that file. And we can takes an exception as pipeline input. So we're going to clear the error, error, error variable and we're going to look at this item that doesn't exist. Now I know that's definitely not there because we're looking in the test drive which is clean every single time you start a describe block. We're going to grab that error out of the error variable, pipe it into write log and then we're going to test that that error message is correct. Great, it is. We're also going to um, check that when we're doing the, exactly the same thing, the error level is correct. And it is. Now, I don't want to have to type out the parameters every single time, particularly for write log. So I've got positional impact, positional input set up. And we're going to test that. Now, we've got a little should be like here rather than should we've used should be up until here. Now we've got should be like. That's fine. All right. So that is testing all the input to the function. Now let's text, test some of the execution. Has a single line of logging. Yep. So it has a single line of logging in the human readable log. Now, because we're doing export CSV, we'll put the titles out there. So even though it's a single log line, 
the fact that we've got um, the headers for the CSV, the count of that should be two. I could have used should um, um, should have count here, but I decided to do it that way. Again, single line uh, in the JSON file. What we're doing here is we're actually taking the JSON properties, measure object count should be three because there's three properties to that JSON object. Great. And then restart a log. So we're writing messages to that. And now we're actually using should have count as two. There's no particular reason I'm doing that. Um, I decided to uh, to vary the, uh, the test in should so that we can bring it in and, and pull together what we've learned so far. Great stuff. Everything looks good. I'm just going to put another breakpoint in there. Um, produces comment ba based help. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to look inside. Um, we're going to ha do help for write log. And now we're just going to make an assumption that um, if there's more than 10 lines of help, then perhaps we've written some. There's probably better ways of doing that but that's what I've got for this, has a timestamp, okay? So we're testing that we can convert the um, timestamp that we've written into a proper date time object and we're doing should be of type date time, that works too. Has an info level, has a warning level, has an error level and a debug level writes the correct message only outputs a single verbose line so what I'm doing is I'm re redirecting the verbose output into the normal output pipe and then we can uh, see if we've uh, got the right number of verbose lines and we do and um, now we're testing that that log the human readable log can actually be uh, a properly imported as a CSV if needed, because now we're importing CSV with a delimiter or tab, and now we can check the message should be CSV test. All right, and then last one has the correct date format in human in user and human readable, and we're writing the log. And what we're doing is we're using should match in terms of the timestamp. And we've got a regex there that will tell us that that timestamp is in the correct format. Wonderful. And let's take all those breakpoints off. And we'll run it all at once so that we can see that lovely bit of green as we put out making sure that every time I make a change to this function it doesn't break out I, the formatting the pipelining or anything else I can be absolutely certain that my log function is still doing what it needs to do so all of this code will be on available on the github repo this copy as it stands will also be part of the github repo for the YouTube pester series if you want to grab a hold of the right log uh, code I would recommend going to the right log repo it's called yet another right log and you can grab it there so if you enjoyed this episode please hit like and if you'd like to see more please hit subscribe cheers